so i am recording this i wanted to go over a, uh, an important uh, point uh, that, uh, regarding uh, the lab from last week and then i will uh, talk about how to actually uh, start working with python and uh, go over the lab as well to see uh, what to tell you what to do and those kinds of things so uh, let me first share the share a slide or maybe a couple of slides from the powerpoint this happens to many students when they start so nothing to be really worried about but something to correct at this stage okay so don't be upset if you wrote like this but be aware that this is not right um, if you write something like this for example i had a question i think the first question in the lab was write a line of pseudo code to set variable a to 10 so how do you set a variable a to 10 it is let me go ahead and um, so you yeah probably i don't need these slides anymore i can just uh, i can just go to the white board so let me go ahead and all right if you want to set a variable a to 10 write it like in algebra more or less set this is all you need to do because you know what the value is it is 10 so you simply say it has to be put into a you will do this kind of thing quite often in programming many 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 times it happens all the time you want to put a value into a variable and then work with it for example when you start um, college you don't have any college credits right so you will say college credits I think uh I think in the chat some students say they can't hear you i believe I don't know. Maybe I'll try to speak softer. Let's. Uh, I don't know what to do. Uh, so you can write. You can write set college credits equal to zero. You know what value this variable should be taking, and then as you are you know, registering for classes and completing them, college credits would. go from 0 to maybe say 3 then to 7 10 14 if you keep going up right that is the plan so you need to initialize this is called initialization sometimes you I, uh, giving the first value initialize right that is that is all frequently used a term frequently used in programming set the first value you want to set it to zero but sometimes it is not zero it could be something else uh, right uh, for example if you are having a timer that uh, counts down from um, 10 seconds or 10 minutes then you would do this kind of stuff timer equals say 600 seconds that is 10 minutes right and then uh, as you have every second elapsed you will subtract one from timer so after a second uh, you you write timer equals timer minus 1 this is the current value of timer which is 600 you subtract 1 you get 599 and that would be the new value of timer right so this would be 599 and that would be stored in timer so that is the purpose of variables you store values in them and you 
play with them, you update them, you pr print them, you, you change them, etc. Right. So when you know what the value should be, just use like this. But there are situations where you don't know what value to be put in. For example, if you are setting a timer, normally uh, on your clock or your phone, when you set a timer, you want to decide what the timer should be should be i mean for how long the timer should be active so let's let me clear all this so you have your cell phone and you are setting the timer you don't want this timer to, to decide the starting value you are the person who you are the one who is setting so you should be able to enter things like 10 minutes or whatever right you should be able to punch that in so the timer program which is inside the cell phone so here is your cell phone and so your cell phone is here and it is a computer and inside that there is a timer program and the timer program should ask you what value do you want and then you say 10 minutes or 20 minutes or 30 minutes or five minutes whatever that is <laughs> so this timer value the initial value should be supplied by the person who is using the phone the timer program should not decide that it is going to be 10 minutes all the time so something like this is not quite useful you don't want a timer that always starts at 10 minutes right it is not uh, very uh, flexible right so you would like to set the timer value the human would like to set it at that time you would say input I don't know what uh, to write here, input the timer value or whatever, timing duration or whatever into some variable, let's say duration. So this is the pseudocode that you will be writing. Input, that is read in. What do you want to read in? The value, the starting value of the timer into you need a variable otherwise this will just not be available so you need to put it into a variable and that is the initial value of the timing right duration will have 600 seconds or 300 seconds or whatever you input and as clock ticks within the cell phone this timer program will keep decrementing duration and when it touches zero it will be so that is how you would do the programming here you need input here because you don't know what the initial value should be you don't want to set it like uh, that timer equals 600 or duration equals Welcome to enter your meeting id followed by pound i couldn't quite hear you i'm sorry Could you uh, ask that again? Let me check chat. Here. Enter your participant ID followed by tab. I think somebody's trying to call into the meeting. Now, there are more than 20 participants in the meeting. This I think meeting is I can't understand a thing. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. okay, let me continue. Mm. Uh, the other way, uh, the other thing, it is very hard for me to keep looking at the chat because uh, as I'm talking, if I look at the chat, it, uh, it becomes very distracting and I lose my train of thought. So I may or may not look at the chat. So if you send messages to me, it will be pretty hard to, for me to look at it. <coughs> Excuse me. So you understand the difference between input and set 
set is used when you know what the value should be input is used when you don't know and you want to ask the user what the value should be so it is important to understand a problem and decide for yourself when to use input and when to use set nobody will tell you you have to figure it out that is part of the challenge in programming making decisions for yourself as to how to go about coming up with the pseudo code okay any questions all right so we have been talking about pseudo code uh, last week so this is basically uh, lousy english plus some math right it's a combination of that you are not trying to be shakespeare here you are just trying to write enough uh, so that others can understand you can understand what you are thinking and um, there should be elementary steps and you also have some math because you don't want to say multiply a by b to get c you just write c equals a times b right so you want to use things like algebra so a lot of algebra would, would come in here but the trouble is uh, this stuff this pseudo code is not something that is understood by a computer the computer has inside it a central processing unit which is all electronics and electronics only understands voltages so it can check whether something is high voltage or low voltage high voltage meaning a very low voltage 5 volts that's it i mean it's not something you get a shock from right so 5 volts is one level zero is another level so you either have high voltage or low voltage so everything the computer understands is in a language that has only two letters actually two digits one and zero in english we have 26 letters right so you distinguish between 26 different things so you can construct lot of things more easily whereas if you only have two digits to express your thoughts you need to write quite a bit and it is not easy to understand for us this is easy to understand this is not what does this mean okay so when you write pseudo code that is not going to go well with the cpu in the cpu only understands this what we are going to do is inside the computer we will run a program called an interpreter in this class we will run a program called an interpreter that understands programs written in a special language we are going to use the language python if you write your program in python as opposed to pseudo code there is available you have available what is called an interpreter for python that translates your python program into something the cpu will understand so let me express this slightly differently here you have the cpu if you write something in pseudo code like you did last week or in the assignment this week no no way this is not going to go well with the cpu it is not going to be understood whereas if you write your solution in python in this special language python we call that solution a program so if you create a python program so you have a, you have certain rules for writing this just as you have rules in english there is a grammar in english there is a corresponding grammar in python so you follow the grammar and write a python program then there is another program the interpreter
that reads this program and produces a version of that program that is all in ones and zeros and the CPU will understand that. So we can use the Python interpreter to execute our programs. So we are going to see in a few minutes how to start using the Python program. Now, you should also realize that there is a grammar associated with Python that is not that is not completely natural. You have been working with English since childhood, many of you, and it is it comes very naturally to you. Whereas you are just going to start learning Python. And whenever you learn a new language, it takes a while to get used to it. So there are two aspects to this class or um, the problem solving process. First of all, there is a problem. I mean, you have to solve a problem. You have to solve problems. The second thing is use an unfamiliar language. So you have to look at problems and come up with a solution. So you need to devise a solution, come up with a solution. That is a hard thing to do. And understanding and using an unfamiliar language is another hard thing. So you don't want to mix these two things. You don't want to do attack these two issues at the same time. That is going to be extremely hard. So when you devise a solution, you might or you should, not might, you should, you must use a vehicle that is more familiar to you. At that time, you should do this in pseudocode. So when you get a problem to work on, first come up with the pseudocode for doing it decide what the input is, what the output is, what the processing is, and um, structure your pseudocode accordingly. The advantage is that at that time, you are only focused on problem solving. You are not worrying about the language. You Much of the pseudocode is going to be in English, which you are very familiar with, which is a lot easier to use than Python. If you start thinking about the problem, coming up with a solution and expressing it in this new language, which is going to be very hard. Don't do that. Take this from me. Okay. Some students tell me coming up with pseudocode is very hard. Oh, yes, it is. But then try it using Python at the same time. It is even harder, much, much harder. So don't do that. Many students, when given a problem, start typing in code in Python. Well, you can write something that Python will accept, but that may not be the solution that is needed. If you don't think about the, the problem and come up with a solution in pseudocode, you will find this class extremely hard. So don't do that. I have a question. Yes. Um, so like when we're writing the pseudocodes, um, does it matter whether we write like read in, you know, for example, read in speed of a vehicle to S um, versus like input speed of a vehicle to S? Does the read and the input matter? Uh, you mean the variable that you used or? Yeah, the, like other just, just the verbiage, yeah. Uh, the variable, what I would do is I would use variable names that are meaningful. 
otherwise when you look at it you don't know you do i mean yeah right for example if you write input i don't have too much space here i'm just going to write input speed into a if you wrote like this it is i mean this is the first letter of the alphabet it immediately comes to my mind but that doesn't mean that this is a good idea oh sorry I, um sorry my question was like if if we put input speed into a is that different from read speed into a no oh, okay okay but i'm glad you pointed that out too cuz um, i didn't and uh, yeah since i am on this you might want to use something that is more suggestive of what you have stored here so that when you see it in some something like a times t you know what this this is not clear to me what is a whereas if i had something like speed and i use speed here it is much more meaningful when i see it it is clearer okay so what we need to do is how to use python so for that what you have to do if you haven't done already is you should go to oh i haven't uh, shared this right okay probably haven't let me share this okay if you haven't done already do this as i am speaking visit python.org okay and uh, there is a download uh, link available so you can probably click here and download uh, i think it is sensing that i have a mac and it is offering the mac version you should uh, use the mac version if you have a mac otherwise if it is windows use windows or i don't know if you have something else um, okay um, i don't know which all platforms it supports definitely most of you have either windows or mac i'm pretty sure so maybe you have uh, linux then uh, there is probably a version for linux i haven't checked you download it and install it in the normal way okay you have install program so it is free you don't have to worry about any licensing it doesn't really matter what what version of python you download provided that is this is important it has to be 3. Point something don't download 2. Point something you might as well download the most recent version okay that is the best way why do you want to hunt for something that is older once you install it you need to use it right how do you use it so let's assume that you have installed python and i'm going to show you how to use it now so i have you remember that i have a mac if you have windows it is going to be different but not substantially i will give you some idea how to do that in mac i see something like this idle i need to click this and it starts up a program called idle what is it i'm not seeing it okay that's a good thing where is it oh here okay all right here it is um, so actually it was sitting there from uh, monday's class so that's why so this is what you get initially i already did something with this previously so that's why uh, let me clear all this okay and let me start this again this is what you get it's a clean uh, page now if you are on windows you should click the start button which is at the bottom left and once you click it you see a list of programs available to you you go 
scroll down, down and down and until you reach P, the letter P. And under that, you should see Python. And under the Python, if you expand it, you will see idle. Click on idle. Okay. Now, I can type in stuff here, like, hello, this is a Python function called print. I can write print, P-R-I-N-T in lowercase, and in parentheses, I can put something in double quotes or single quotes. Whatever I give will be printed. I can write x equals 1, y equals 2, and do x plus y, it prints 3, okay? I can do all this, but this is not going to be all that useful because if I close the program, everything is lost. When you do your lab, when you do your assignment, for most of the work, you should actually create all, write all these things in a file. So you click on file and click new file and you type in your code like this, x equals 1. This is not going to be a very um, useful program, but this is to show you how to do stuff x equals 1, y equals 2, print x plus y. Okay. So I have a program. You can store 1 into a variable called x, 2 into a variable called y, and I can add x and y and print the result. I can also print the value of x and y. I can also write when added gives. So I can write a bunch of things. All of them will be printed. So this will print what? You're telling Python to print stuff. Print x, so it will print 1. Then I give another thing, y. y is 2, so it will print 2. So it will print 1, put a space, and then put 2. Then it will print this verbatim. When added, give. So you will see that text. Then x plus y. x plus y is 1 plus 2, so it will print 3. But to execute this, to, that is to actually get this going, the terminology is execute or run. So you save this, save or save as, it doesn't matter in this case. And you should save this in a folder of your choice. Let me see if, uh, okay, let me create a, I'm creating a folder called demo and putting it that. Um, example, ex1, for example, one. Just give a name, it will attach the extension py. So you can see that the file is now saved as ex1.py. Now to run this, you can click run and click run module, or you can click the function key F5. For Mac, I need to press the Fn key and F5. So it says one, two, when added gives three. So the result is in a different window. This is where I'm developing the program. And in the other window, I get the result. I can run this again. Runs again. Okay. That is how it is done. Any questions? Anybody?
Okay. Now, uh, let me then show you the lab for tonight. And then we will get going with the class exercise and then wait for the um, lab. Okay. And here it is, the lab for tonight. What do you need to do? You need to re read the steps and carry out the actions suggested or required. You need to write a Python program eventually that reads in the following information, what are they? The number of credits of classes taken by a student. For example, a student may be taking 12 credits in a semester. So how many credits is being taken? And the tuition rate, let's say it is $150. So that needs to be entered by the user. We need to compute the total tuition and print out the number of credits and the tuition rate that we are read in. So the program then prints the information it read in, which are these two things, and the total tuition. Now you will eventually write this program, execute it, and make sure that it is working correctly. It is your task as a programmer to ensure that your program is in working order. So before you turn it in, make sure that it is working correctly. So you need to check your program with some values. So come up with some values here for the number of credits and the tuition rate. Don't come up with trivial things like number of credits is one and tuition rate is one. Also, don't come up with extremely hard things for which it is difficult to figure out the answer uh, in your head or using a simple computation. For example, don't come up with number of credits of uh, 275. No, I mean, that is a ridiculously large number. And don't come up with a tuition rate of 72.346432. I mean, some weird numbers. Come up with reasonable numbers. Okay, and don't come up with the same set of numbers twice. You will not get full credit if you did that. You should come up with different sets. You should test your program with different types of values, different uh, values so that sets of values so that you know that it is, you have more confidence that it is working. At, now that you have understood the problem and come up with a set of values, your next step should be to figure out what is the input and write the pseudocode for reading the input. Then figure out what your processing is and write the steps for processing it. And finally, you need to print the answer as required here the problem statement. So write the pseudocode for outputting the information. So I have given suggestions on how to write pseudocode, right? Set something equal to something, print something, or read or input or whatever, or into variable. Write all that. If you want, you can collect all that and write it again here, or you don't have to. Then you start up Python convert your pseudocode into Python. You have um, half a dozen steps there, probably, or maybe less, maybe fewer. Convert each one into Python. For this, I have given a helpful set of uh, instructions. If you have in your pseudocode something like this, input an integer into x, then you need to write x equals int input enter an integer. 
don't go and code this exactly in your pro program that is not what is this this is an example of showing you how to take something from pseudocode into python okay if you simply type this up then you will get meaningless programs don't do that if you want to write set x to a plus b it is even simpler in python write x equals a plus b or if you want to print a bunch of things like print a comma b comma c all of them you would write print and in parentheses just list everything you want to print and once you finish this you can zip uh, you need to submit this word file and your python program i need the python file not the output the py file if you don't know how to zip you can either learn it tonight or you can submit the two files separately i don't really care too much okay so that is the lab the lab should be submitted into the drop box like last week and the class exercise should be submitted in d12 any questions before we start up the class exercise of course i have to take attendance any questions anybody okay in that case let me stop recording